So what is the impardonable sin? Is it lying? Is it fornication? You shacking? Homosexuality. Stay tuned to today's video and we're going to get into it. What is the impardonable sin? And that's coming right up. Preach, preach. Hey. Yo, what's good, everybody? It is your boy, Eddie of Remnant Outreach Ministries. Welcome to today's video. If you like what you see, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and that notification bell, and you will be notified about every single new video that we upload. So let's get started. Now, if you ask the evangelicals, they might say homosexuality or abortion. You ask the uh, culture, culture, they might say fornication and lying. You ask different people and they might give you a hundred different answers. But what does the Bible have to say? The impardonable sin. And that's what we're going to take a look at. If you open your Bibles up, turn over to Matthew, the 12th chapter. Yes, I said Matthew, the 12th chapter. And we're going to take a look at what the Bible has to say. Now, I'm going to read the 22nd through the 30th verse. And it reads like this. It says, then there, were, there was brought to him one who was demon possessed, blind and mute. And he healed him so that the blind and mute man both spoke and saw. And all the multitudes were amazed and said, could this be the son of David? Now, when the Pharisees heard it, they said, this fellow does not cast out demons except by Beelzebub, the ruler of demons. But Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, every kingdom that is divided against itself is brought to desolation. And every city or house that is divided against itself will not stand. If Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. And how will and then how will his kingdom stand? And if I cast out demons by Beelzebub, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore, they shall be your judges. They shall be judges for you. But if I cast out demons by the spirit of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. Or, he, or how can he enter a strong man's house to plunder his goods unless he first bind the uh, strong man and plunder his house? He who is not with me is against me, and he who does not gather with me scatters abroad. Now, in the 31st and the 32nd verse, Jesus gets real specific on this whole impardonable sin situation. And let's take a look at what he has to say about it. Therefore, I say to you that Every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven man, but the blasphemy against the spirit will not be forgiven man. Anyone who speaks a word against the son of man, it will be forgiven him. But whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit, it will not be forgiven him either in this age or in the ages to come. Now, if you have not already, go and check out the playlist on the Holy Spirit as I broke down who the Holy Spirit is, God's intention for the Holy Spirit in mankind, uh, redemption and restoration, and how the Holy Spirit played part, played a heavy part in that, and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But today, we're talking about the impardonable sin, the sin that you commit that you ain't never been forgiven for. No, I ain't a homosexual. No, I ain't abortion. It ain't that lying tongue or no other fact that you shacking. All of those things through the blood of Christ and repentance can be forgiven. But we're talking about the impartable sin. Blasphemy against the Holy Ghost. Now, I remember when I was younger, I was just saved, right? And I was talking to this young lady talking about uh, the Holy Spirit. And she was talking about referencing the scripture. And she was like, you know how these people talk about the Holy Spirit when people are jumping up and down and shouting and falling out. And the Bible says that ain't no blasphemy, blasphemy against the Holy Spirit going to be forgiven. And so they talking about this. They don't even know what they're talking about because they can't be forgiven for it. Now, as a young man that didn't know any better, I'm over there like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. This lady was wrong with two left shoes over there in, that, in them streets. And um, I pray that the lady's watching right now because you was wrong. I pray that you've repented because that was many years ago. I pray that your understanding has grown just as mine has. When you see what happened in this uh, passage of scripture, Jesus cast out and healed the man. And it was through the power of the Holy Spirit. And the Pharisees attributed that power to demons. 
what he did wasn't God. Mm -mm. He was casting out them demons by demons. That's what it was. He's showing demon power. That's what they're doing. Going over there, laying hands on them sick. You're transferring spirits. That's what you're doing. That's what you're doing. You ain't you ain't casting out. You ain't healing nobody. You, you, you're transferring spirits. That's what you're doing. What are you talking about casting out demons? That ain't nothing but some demonic stuff over there if I've seen it myself. Now, I've heard all of this from church people. And what that tells me is that many people don't really have an understanding of who the Holy Spirit is and what the Holy Spirit does. The Holy Spirit is the third person of the triune God or the Trinity. Uh, or even if you're in the oneness, you look at the Holy, you look at God as being one person, but three different manifestations. But in that, the Holy Spirit is the power. It's the power that brings things to life and the power that even brought you to salvation. One more scripture real quick, and then we're going to close this out. Turn to Romans chapter 8. We're going to start reading at the ninth verse. In Romans chapter 8, verse 9, we're going to read down to verse 11, and it reads like this. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he is not his. If Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. To attribute the works of the Holy Spirit to demons or to just downplay the Holy Spirit altogether, it cancels you out from receiving the biggest miracle of all, which is salvation, giving life to your dead, irreconcilable spirit and soul now to be reconciled back to God. So why is this so unreconcilable and so unforgivable? Well, I have a few reasons right here for you, baby. Reason number one is the Holy Spirit convicts the world of sin. So if there was no conviction of sin, there will be no need for salvation or there will be no recognition of the need of salvation. You wouldn't be able to even recognize that you have need of a Savior. The Holy Spirit is what revives our spirit back to God. Like I said, it makes our spirit become alive to God's spirit so that now we can have fellowship with the Lord. The Holy Spirit is the witness that testifies of Christ and what he did. The Holy Spirit was right there. The Holy Spirit was the one that raised Christ from the dead. So, of course, the Holy Spirit was right there. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I had a moment. I had a moment. It's the Holy Spirit that leads us and guides us in all truth. We think we know the truth, but it's the Holy Spirit that's leading us and guiding us, baby. That's what that is. It's the Holy Spirit that reveals to us the mind of God. The Holy Spirit empowers us to do the works of Christ. It's not just because I have an unction. It's not just because I have a desire. I need the grace to flow to do what we do when it comes to the ministry. Even this teaching that I'm sharing with you right now, it's the Holy Spirit that enables me. It's the Holy Spirit that enables every believer to do everything that we've ever done for Christ. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the proof of our salvation. In one of those other videos, I talked about how the Holy Spirit is like that earnest money. It shows that he had the intention to purchase back. You know, when you have that intention to buy that house, you got to put that earnest money. When you have the intention to marry that woman, you get an engagement ring. That's what the Holy Spirit is for the believer. It's the proof of our salvation, like Ephesians says, until the full redemption of the redeemed product which is our bodies. And the Holy Spirit restores the kingdom of God back into our hearts. Without the Holy Spirit, we could not be influenced on God's behalf to do God's will. So to blaspheme the Holy Spirit and deny his power is to effectively prevent our own salvation simply because it's the Holy Spirit's working that caused us to be saved in the first place. Yes, Christ did the work, but now the Holy Spirit is doing the work, causing us to come to Christ, being bold witnesses to Christ, being effective ministers for Christ, living our lives out loud for Christ. Without the Holy Spirit, none of that is possible. And that's why that's the impartable sin. Again, if you're doing any of the other sins that I've named, yes, repentance is needed. I'm not sitting over here talking about, you know, you're just going to keep doing what you're doing and, and the Lord is just going to roll out the red carpet and you're just getting into heaven and just going to walk in the, in the goodness of the Lord anyway. 
That's not how this works. However, those things are not irredeemable when it comes to the sacrifice of Christ. However, when you deny the Holy Ghost, when you deny the power of the Holy Ghost, when you deny the workings of the Holy Spirit, that's impartable. God bless you guys. Have a good one.